Wiring up central heating systems isn't always something that a lot of people in the trade feel very confident about doing. And it's mainly purely based on the fact that people don't do it on a regular basis. Um, so just put this little video together to sort of go through an S-Plan wiring diagram. And uh, what you can see on the screen now is the uh, Honeywell Home S-Plan wiring diagram from their wiring guide app. So, yeah, you can download it for free and it's a good thing to have on your phone in the future if you're ever stuck and wanting to wire up a, an S-Plan system from scratch. But what I thought I'd do is uh, put this into a more interactive diagram and uh, walk through how to wire it step by step. So I thought I'd show a more interactive S-Plan wiring diagram here. And uh, obviously this would be in conjunction with the diagram following the advice from the Honeywell Home Wiring Guide. And that would be in the form of the booklet or the app itself. So it's quite important to just mention that there are a few things missing from this diagram. So just uh, for a little bit of clarity to have a little bit more room on this slide, the few spur is missing from this diagram. Um, um, but obviously the live neutral and earth, the permanent live neutral and earth from the few spur, the permanent live would be wired into terminal one. The neutral would be wired into terminal two and the earth from the few spur would be wired into terminal three. What you'll find inside the actual wiring center itself is that terminals one, two and three are physically bigger than terminals four to ten. And it's a good idea if you're wiring these things up from scratch um, to get all of your permanent lives and wire them into terminal one. All of your neutrals from all of the components, wire them into terminal two and then all of your earths, wire them into terminal three. And once you've got rid of those permanent lives, the neutrals and the earths into one, two and three, you can then concentrate on the switching wires, which will join the relevant components together in the terminals numbered four through to ten. So firstly, obviously minus the few spur, uh, it's a good idea to wire in your permanent lives to the programmer, first of all, as you can see, and also your two grey wires from your two zone valves your heating zone valve and from your domestic hot water zone valve the gray wires are permanent lives and should be wired into terminal one from a central heating circuit perspective to wire it in terminal four from the industry standard back plate at the top of the screen there is the central heating on terminal so you'd wire from terminal four from the industry standard back plate into terminal four into the wiring center and then from terminal four, you now need to wire out to a room thermostat. And in this case, it's a mechanical thermostat. And that 230 volts, which comes from terminal four of the industry standard back plate into terminal four of the wiring center, the wire then from terminal four needs to be then wired. Another wire from terminal four needs to be wired into terminal one of the mechanical room thermostat. You then need to wire from terminal three from the mechanical room thermostat back into the wiring center into terminal five. And also into terminal five, you need to connect the brown wire from the actual um, central heating zone valve. The brown wire needs to go into terminal five. The orange wire from the central heating zone valve will need to go into terminal 10. And then, of course, your um, switch live to your boiler and the pump will also be connected into terminal 10 as well. So when we put power on the um, brown wire from terminal five, when there's a demand from the programmer and the room thermostat <clears throat> that brown wire will energize the motor the motor will turn and it will make a micro switch inside the central heating zone valve actuator head which in essence puts the permanent live from the gray through the micro switch and out to the orange and then that 230 volts ac from the orange which is now being wired into terminal 10 will then energize the boiler and the pump to bring the boiler and the pump on your hot water circuit, so your hot water on from the industry standard programmer back plate is terminal three. That needs to be wired into terminal six. And you can also see from terminal six, we now need to be connected from that same terminal with a wire out and in on terminal one to your cylinder thermostat. Now we go in on one with 230. If it calls for heat, that 230 volts AC will leave the common. So the wire from terminal C from the cylinder thermostat needs to be wired into terminal eight. And of course, now we need to energize the brown wire on the domestic hot water zone valve. And that's why the brown wire is also wired into terminal eight. And then you can see that the orange wire from the domestic hot water zone valve will be also wired into terminal 10. 
And that's because, again, once we power the brown wire to the two port hot water zone valve and the motor does its thing and opens the valve and eventually makes the micro switch inside the actuator head, it puts the 230 volts AC from the grey through the micro switch yeah, out of the orange and then power on the orange wire into terminal 10 will bring on the boiler and the pump. So all neutrals need to be wired into terminal two. So neutrals from zone valves, uh, from your boiler and the pump, from uh, obviously to the programmer back plate. And also very importantly with a mechanical stat, you need a neutral wire on, on terminal two, um, uh, going to terminal two of the stat itself. And any earth wires from any of the components that are actually wired into this will also need to be wired into terminal three.